The government has said it was absolutely necessary to reimpose quarantine restrictions on arrivals from Spain a day after the change came into effect with just a few hours' notice. All four nations of the United Kingdom made the same decision after what the Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab described as a big jump in new coronavirus cases in Spain. Everyone now coming into the UK from any part of Spain is required to go into quarantine for 14 days. The greatest concentration of infections is in the northeast of the country. Popular tourist areas in southern Spain, the Canaries and the Balearic Islands are seeing relatively low infection rates. We'll report from Spain in a moment, but first our business correspondent Katie Austin on what this means for travel companies and individuals. Any hopes of a great summer holiday revival have taken a knock this weekend. The re-imposition of quarantine measures on arrivals from Spain with just a few hours' notice has sparked frustration, including among people who had just gone out to Spain from the UK. You just don't want your whole life to kind of be upheavaled and have to cancel all your work or not being able for my sister not being able to go to school. It's, it's, just, it's a lot of stress and hassle. The government said it was acting after the Joint Biosecurity Centre and Public Health England updated their coronavirus assessments of Spain based on the latest data. We're taking this in a targeted, decisive and focused way. We appreciate the disruption for travellers. Uh, anyone that's uh, at risk losing money needs to go and talk to their travel operator and look at their insurance. But we must take these measures to avoid the risk of reinfection into the UK given the very serious spike in cases in Spain. It was always possible the list of countries exempt from the quarantine requirements would change, but the removal of Spain, such a popular tourist destination, is a nightmare scenario for the travel industry. Tourism and aviation companies who have been hit so hard in recent months hoped people would start to book their summer holidays again. The fear will be that now people have seen how quickly the situation can change, they'll be put off future bookings. The way in which it has been communicated in the last 24 hours is shambolic and the consequence is that many families now left asking lots of questions of stressed, uh, anxious, uh, need to know from their employer whether they'll be able to isolate when they return from their holiday. Thousands of would-be holidaymakers now face difficult choices. Refunds are unlikely unless there are cancellations. British Airways is still running its flights. So is EasyJet, which is offering rebooking or vouchers. But the UK's largest tour operator, TUI, has cancelled all holidays to mainland Spain until after the 9th of August. The UK airline's trade body said the government needed to change its approach. It's a big blow. Obviously, Spain is one of, our, one of the largest markets for, for UK passengers going out. And as you say, it was only, only a few weeks ago when the, the first batch of, of travel corridors were, were introduced from the UK, which meant you wouldn't have to quarantine on, on arrival. And really, for us, that was where the recovery of the sector was able to begin because before that, you know, essentially the airlines across the, across the country have been grounded for the best part of, of three months. Employers are being urged to be sympathetic to employees who will now have to unexpectedly self-isolate, but they're not obliged to pay those who won't be able to work. And while you'd be entitled to statutory sick pay if you had the virus or symptoms, there's no such automatic entitlement during post-travel quarantine. While calls continue for a more regional approach to the UK government's quarantine rules, the travel industry is bracing itself for more turbulent times ahead. Katie Austin, BBC News. Well, the UK's decision is a blow to Spain's tourism industry. Its government says that the new virus outbreaks are being controlled and that the country is safe to visit. Our correspondent Guy Hedgeko reports from Madrid. For thousands of British holidaymakers, relaxation suddenly turned to frustration here in Barcelona. It's a, a bit crazy con considering the restrictions in place in Spain already are really good with the masks, yeah. with disinfecting everything, with hand wash in the shops. That's better than what we have in London. Others think it is the right move. Since the number of cases uh, here in Spain are, are rising, I think it's probably a sensible measure and, and I was expecting it to be honest. The decision has major implications for Spain. Britons make up nearly a quarter of all those who travel to the country. Several parts of Spain, like Barcelona, are grappling with a resurgence of coronavirus, with a number of areas seeing a spike in cases. The Spanish government insists that this is not a reason for tourists to stay away and is calling for popular destinations to be excluded from being on the quarantine list. 
And in particular, our dialogue efforts at the moment are focused around excluding from the quarantine measures the Balearic and the Canary Islands. Uh, for two reasons. Number one, these are islands, uh, very safe territories. Number two, their epidemiological data is uh, extremely uh, positive, or well below epidemiological data in the UK. Despite the new restrictions, some in Ibiza are just happy to be on holiday. Still going to ride it out. Yeah, we're going to have a good time and just deal with it when we're back. Yeah. Like you say, yeah, it's one of them. We need probably two weeks' uh, recovery. Yeah. But for now, Spain is paying a high price for the virus's continued spread. Guy Hedgeco, BBC News, Madrid. So how much do we know about the source of Spain's new outbreaks? And how does the World Health Organization compare Spain's infection numbers with other countries? Here's our science editor, David Shukman, who's been looking at the figures and the differing approaches to border control. A lockdown, strictly enforced, seemed to work well in Spain earlier this year because numbers came down dramatically. But since then, the coronavirus situation has changed. What's happening now is that there are spikes in different parts of the country. In Catalonia, for example, home to Barcelona and Costa Brava, there have been more than 8,500 cases in the past fortnight. But other areas are doing much better. The Balearic Islands, including Mallorca, have had just 92 cases over the same period. So how does Spain compare with Italy and other countries that are popular with tourists? Well, after a big rise, Italy is now down to a few hundred cases every day. There's a similar pattern in France, though its infections are running at about 1,000 a day. By contrast, Spain, with the recent rise, is now running at about 2,000 infections every day. So the risks of a resurgence are very real. So would it help to do more tests for coronavirus at airports as people arrive? In France, there's mandatory testing at airports for anyone arriving from a high-risk country, including the United States and Brazil. In Germany, there's voluntary testing at airports, though it may become compulsory because there are doubts about people sticking to the 14 days needed for self-isolation. In the Netherlands, they're trying a more targeted approach Anyone arriving from a very specific high-risk area, including the city of Leicester and several regions of Spain, will be asked to self-isolate. So as the virus keeps circulating, there are bound to be more spikes and changes in the way we respond to them. David Shukman, our science editor there. Well, here, the latest official figures show that in the last 24 hours, the deaths of 14 people who had tested positive for coronavirus were recorded. That brings the total number of UK deaths to 45,752. In the past week, an average of 64 people a day died with coronavirus. Let's join Vicky Young now, our correspondent live in Westminster. This change on quarantine, Vicky, um, means immediate questions for many people who are affected by all of this. What do you make of the government's approach? Well, they're certainly not apologising for it. Uh, they say this shows that they are acting decisively. Now, of course, these lockdown measures have been constantly under review. And ministers have said that from the beginning, that if circumstances change, then measures can be put back in place. We've seen that in Leicester. We're seeing it now with international travel from Spain. The government certainly, though, is aware of how disruptive this is going to be. Potentially hundreds of thousands of people having to quarantine for 14 days. The rules are pretty strict. You have to stay at home. You have to get other people to get your shopping for you if you can. And, of course, you can't go back to work. And I think that is causing quite a lot of anxiety. Labour concerned that there might be employers uh, who simply can't afford to pay people to stay at home for two weeks. But this really is the first uh, big test of these quarantine uh, travel quarantine rules. Uh, ultimately, you can be fined for disobeying them, but really the government is relying on people to simply do the right thing. Vicky Young, thank you very much.